Welcome everybody, we are live at Adobe Max. I have the wonderful Dave Warner to me. Hey, how's it going? Real quick intro before we get into all the housekeeping items, but he is the character animator wizard. Oh, thanks. Appreciate yes. That. Anything that needs to be said or done about character animator, if you need to know it, this guy's the talk. he's the guy to talk to. So, we're gonna jump into him real quick, but before we do that, I wanna get into some housekeeping items. So as you can see, we're live at Adobe Max. We have a behind the scenes cam. Yep, there we go. There's a guy wandering around. They don't have a shot of all the fans that are over here standing. And yeah, it's just the though. giant That's, crowd yeah, it's, right It's too here. bad they it's, don't uh, have that camera. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you just sit down, please? Thanks. Yeah, okay, just, great. Please, yeah. a little quiet. Yeah, we're, we're, really, trying we're trying to do a, to do a show live. Here. Come we're on. trying to be live. Okay. Okay, okay. They Paco, you have so many fans. I mean, everyone say, Paco, Paco, you have yes. not hosted before, is that correct? I haven't. No, this is the first time. This is so. amazing. Congratulations. Let's hear it for Paco, everyone. All right, thanks. I'll just yes. give myself yes. a pat yes. on the back. Yes, you should. Great. You should. Yeah. This is awesome. This is great. No, but some of you may know me. I'm the guy that runs the streams back at our office. I'll make cameo appearances here and there just to like fix the internet or fix screens <laughs> and all that. So. That happened on our stream. Uh, it does. Someone tripped it, it over happens the more often cord. than yeah. not. The, yeah. the thing about live streaming that anything that can go wrong will happen at some point. So <laughs> that's where my job gives me a job. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's great to see you all in the chat. Um, I see a lot of you with your names and tag. So I, I just want to take the opportunity to actually thank all of you for watching and tuning in and watching our live streams. It's, it's really great the community we have and all the stuff we do. So, enough about that. Let's get into what we're here for. We're gonna do a character animator stream. Um, around 30 minutes, we are gonna do a chat and win. So we have a, a graphic that will show what it is we're giving away. Pretty much, it's a three month CC subscription. There it is. Uh, so stick around, chat with us, win with us, and you'll get a chance to win a three month Creative Cloud subscription. Uh, we're, all, we're about halfway done, so we have a couple more segments. We do have a schedule slide to show the remaining streams we have. Um, and yes, this is the last day. It's been a blast. This is my second Adobe Max. Uh, they're marathons, but they're always a great time to meet people, chat with amazing creatives, Definitely. character animator artists, yeah. all that good stuff. So we're live right now at 12 with Dave. We have what's new in Adobe Spark after this with Monica Burns. We have photo editing workflows with Amelia, and then UI UX design in Adobe XD. There goes the graphic, but <laughs> that's the last one. Hope you got um, that. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> so anyways, enough about the intro, enough about me. Let's get into what the show is all about. Dave, take us away. What are we doing today? What are we highlighting? Yeah. I know we have some things that we want to talk about, so yeah, let's well, hear it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, as usual. And uh, yeah, Character Animator on Monday, as with every Adobe app, you know, you get your 20 update apps that showed up uh, that, that I was doing from my hotel room, which was slow going. Uh, but yeah, Character Animator is one of those that had a new release, and ours was the uh, 3.0 release. So we've been um, out for a few years now. And, uh, um, but yeah, we have added some great features that uh, people have been asking for for a long time. As with uh, most Adobe teams, we're very customer feedback driven, right? right so right. when- Which is great. Yeah. I mean, a, yeah. a lot of teams do that. I know the XZ team is great about yes. doing that. They, exactly. they listen to the community. Exactly. So yes. that's amazing that you all do that as so well. So if you have any I mean, feature ideas, please put them in the chat. Uh, 20 bucks per feature, I'll get it in, no <laughs> problem. No. You just got to slip on the little yeah, exactly, 20. Exactly, exactly. We'll Venmo is, vote. no, just don't do that. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that's the way that we've kind of operated is uh, we don't want to design or create features in a vacuum. We want to hear what people are asking for. And so the main features that I'm going to show you today are really things that people have been asking for and said, this would make my life so much easier if I had these I love that. things. We do it for you all. We do. We do that's it for awesome. you. That's um, So yeah, so uh, I'm here on the home screen in Character Animator. And um, we've added a few new puppets. And this is one of the things people love the most is that they've got these free example puppets immediately ready to download and try out. So if you want to be a clay sculpted doctor, or you want to be this wizard, or you want to be this troll, or a dancing unicorn. Or a ninja. Or, or 
a ninja. Yeah, exactly. Whatever this characters. soccer ball guy is. Exactly. exactly. It's exactly. there. You it's can be a soccer there. ball guy. <laughs> um, so you've got a lot of options. And, and if you want more, you just click see more, and that's going to take you to even more characters as well. Um, so we have like you know, 50, 75 free characters that wow. people can uh, download. But uh, it's a great starting point. And then we've also added here, these two are completely new tutorials. They're interactive tutorials um, in the app that allow you to um, kind of learn the basics of character animator. So this is your first time opening a character animator, or it's been a while since you've opened it up. Um, you can check these out. This will kind of be a five minute walkthrough showing you all the basics of how it works. And then the recording lessons um, are eight mini lessons that teach you how to record, how to edit, how to add um, some new features that we're showing. And uh, it's really helpful. I so, love it. This is, this is like the starter page right here. Yes, yes. If you're this getting into character exactly. animator and you don't know where to start, it's all here. Yeah. It's you're got all the bells and whistles. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So let's go into a project here. Um, I've got rig mode open. And uh, just to give people a brief overview, if you haven't seen Character Animator before, what it does is allow you to take any PSD or AI file. So a Photoshop or Illustrator file, doesn't matter. Use whatever feels comfortable to you. And you bring it into Character Animator. And if you name things a certain way, like head, left eye, right eyebrow, all of this stuff, it gets tagged over here as, a, uh, as an eyebrow or a head or whatever you have. And so those are terms that Character Animator can understand to turn into performance capture. So if I go here to record mode, and now I've got my cat here and turn on my, um, my camera. Hey, that's you. I see that I've got my eyebrows uh, moving up and down. I, when I blink, my character blinks. And as I look around with my pupils, my character is doing the same. I even have a little hair flopping up there going on. Uh, character Animator so cool. has a full physics engine uh, included in it, which is great. But even cooler, when I turn on the microphone, now I have live lip sync as well. Now, it's not the best signal because it's so noisy from the fans over here that we, you you know, it's, it's, yeah. we got to drown that out. But um, if you were in an isolated studio environment or um, you know, in, in a, in, at your office or something like that with a dedicated microphone, it would look a lot better. But still, this is using Adobe Sensei technology to uh, com compute the lip sync in real time. So as I'm talking, in this Photoshop file, this guy has a group called Mouth, and it has for up to 14 different mouth layers, ah, e, u, all of that stuff. And you can trans, and character, uh, Sensei is listening for the sounds I'm saying and saying, okay, now here's the o, or here's the f, or here's the ah, and doing that in real time. So, you know, animation to me, before I joined, you know, did character animator, it was like, Animation, character animation feels way too complicated. It didn't feel like anything I could ever do. Very like, intimidating. Yeah, right, very intimidating, right? You have to set up these really complicated rigs and you know all of this stuff, but now I just act and talk naturally. This is real time. It's an animated character. It's the camera looking at him and it's exactly. animating this. Exactly, exactly. You know, we see the movies with all the motion tracking dots and it, you're yeah, like, Yeah, you don't need to cool, do that. Cool, this is a field I'm just not gonna go into. Yeah, right, exactly. Right? There's so exactly. much that has to go into it, but right here it's happening yeah. all real time just by looking at your face. Yep. As you can see, he's talking with whatever we're saying. And as we can see from the chat as well, people are just blown away yeah, by this. Downloading I mean, it right now. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we got oh, Deb saying, wow, so cool. Steve yeah. saying, sweet. Oh my, this is crazy. I've never been in it. This is Pamela. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I just love that we're just showcasing this to all the people because it's such a cool app that we have. And yeah. I think people realize the magic that comes from Character Animator. I, I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Yeah, and, and you can add, you know, it's not just this smiling cat the whole time. So I also have the ability to do different emotions. So if he's a little bit happier, I can, you know, change you these go. things called triggers. Triggers allow it. you to take other elements of your Photoshop file. So let's say I have another layer and I say, when I press this button, I want the old eyes to go away and these new eyes to show up. Or he could be a little more confident in himself or like Paco was nervous before the show so he kind of yeah, looked like this. Yeah, bullets, there yeah. you go. That that's was my face like. that, that, when that I woke up. That's, that's my Paco impression. Yeah. Uh, no, he was totally fine. Um, or you know, you're kind of questioning things or questioning, you're Questioning, why am I here? Yeah, right, exactly. What, what are we doing here? <laughs> laughing. Or maybe no one's watching. Oh, no one's watching. Oh, it's terrible. Start crying. So that's the great thing. When you're a cartoon character, you can do whatever you want. You can do, you know, Aruga, something like that. Like, and these are just layers in the Photoshop file that keep showing you um, that you can just trigger at on demand at any time, and it really allows you to do a lot of stuff. Um, someone was asking for, can you do hand movements too? Um, so face tracking, uh, face tracking is the main thing that we do with Character Animator right now. Um, we are working on technologies, and hopefully in the future you'll be able to dance, and your whole character will start dancing. There you go. In 
and, and give us two or three years, and this Adobe Live will be a dance stage, and we'll all be dancing and doing. That's what saw, it's going to be yeah. in a couple of years. I mean, if you We're saw just, Max Sneaks last night, like they're working on that stuff. There's so. some stuff brewing. Yeah, let's just um, say that. For now, though, what you would do is you would use uh, the mouse to drag the hands into different positions. So I can oh. drag them into different poses or do this sort of thing. Or you can also set poses with triggers and then move between them. So here's a little wave or that's a spicy mitzabala, <laughs> or you know, different poses you can move between. So a lot of times in animation, particularly 2D animation, you don't see the arms always moving like this right. in real time. You go more from one pose to the next, to another one, and that's the more traditional animated route, and so there are workflows to do that sort of thing, and uh, that's kind of how we ask people to do their characters. And I may be part. jumping ahead here, yeah. but all these movements, those are all, this all, those can all be keyframed, right? They can, and okay. that's a great segue, actually. Yes. This, look at this host. Look at this guy. It's like he we knows planned what's this. Happening. It's amazing. It's amazing. So uh, yes, you can uh, add one of the biggest features that we added here, uh -huh. and uh, it was uh, keyframes. So there it is. you'll see. Look at this timeline. Oh, that's got keyframes. Is this After Effects? Is this it looks like what's, After what's Effects. So on? all yeah. of you who are familiar with After Effects and motion graphics, yeah, looks crazy if you don't. But if you do, this is some home territory here, and so this what is, is all in character. Yeah, exactly. Now. So what does this allow you to do? Well, it, what keyframes now allow you to do is you just uh, set keyframes and tell where you want guy. your character to be. So, but the nice thing is now it's combining live action performance capture plus keyframes, oh. and so you can kind of combine the best of both worlds. So if you know your way around keyframes and easing and all. Of that stuff you, you can be right at home here and then you can add on top of it the live performance capture so if I want to make character like I hear I had here float in and then they start talking a little bit and then maybe the you know Saturn gets knocked out Just of the, the way it goes away um, there's a little was that keyframe the planet in the background yes, it was. Too? so it's so all can, this whole yeah scene everything is keyframed here it's keyframable um, <laughs> yes exactly so I just okay. added a bunch of different things here and the way to set up a keyframe is really simple so I've got my character selected here um, let's say I want to do a new thing um, where I open up my alien over here and and I just click a stopwatch icon. When you hover over top of something that's keyframable, you get a nice little stopwatch icon that appears over here. And if I click on that, that's gonna add a keyframe on that track. And then I could awesome. say, okay, I want the anchor point to be here, or maybe, you know, when I move over here, I want it to be a different position. And then Character Animator is gonna fill the in between and move your character from one position to the next, scale them up, make them, you know, change their transparency, whatever you want. So it's really easy and it's very familiar if you're used to tools like yeah. After Effects or even keyframes in, you know, Photoshop or other programs, you can totally do this sort of stuff here in Character Animator. Um, which is fantastic. Awesome. Now you also have the ability, one of the cool things about Character Animator is you have the ability to um, add these into triggers. So remember with the cat, I was pressing those different buttons and doing these different expressions. Right. Well, look what you can do. I can select these keyframes, right click them, and say, create replay and trigger from keyframes. Ooh. That allows me to make that keyframe into a trigger when I press a button, have my character do that. So let's say I'm doing a little alien you know, live stream and let's start in the uh, out position. So see you later. <laughs> and let's uh, bring this down. Actually, let me uh, make sure I'm in the right position here. That's good. Okay, now we'll move out. And I'm gonna move uh, the, the clouds sort of moving in the background and then here comes my character. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Shizzler the Alien, and I'm super excited to be here. Nice. And I'm just gonna jump up and down. There's a little squash and stretch, classic animation principles going on in there. I'm gonna jump in the background, and I'm still acting live, but I'm mixing the keyframes over top of it. So this combines your keyframe animation with your live animation. So, and, yeah. every time you push one of those triggers, it's making a keyframe. So even though we're not seeing it on the timeline, it's making a keyframe every time we yeah, do a well, trigger? Yeah, well, these are what we call replays. So you see when I press something, actually our, uh, our uh, little heads are in front of it right now, but there's this little panel over here called replays. Jacob, can you swap the frame so we're on the other side? Let's see if we can fix that. Let's see, so that way we can see what we're talking about. There we okay, go. Okay, so. cool. So over here we have our replays, and basically like the in and the out, when I, when I click this trigger, that's something I recorded in the timeline. Uh, that could be a performance take, that could be keyframes, that could be whatever. Got it. And I can bundle that up into kind of this little prepackaged element. So, you know, for some characters, like, here's an example of, um, I mean, I might as well just show this. This might get me fired, but uh, this is Scott Belsky um, that, from that Adobe. That looks like Scott Belsky. Right. Um, and uh, I made a cartoon version of him. We did this Max. You made this. I made this, wow. yeah, I made this and still have a job, apparently, uh, somehow. <laughs> um, so, uh, with Scott, we were doing this uh, press event a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I had this guy projected on the screen, 
and uh, kind of introducing, talking to the crowd. So, hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Scott, and uh, good to be here today. And uh, you know, and I was saying how the real Scott wasn't here; that only a cartoon character was right, going to show right. up today. And uh, you know, sorry about that. And uh, hey, you want to buy my book, The Messy Middle? It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> so I had all these triggers, right? So you can add whatever you want. And so with Scott, I was saying, you know, it's really exciting when I um, when I see a new product I really like. I go like this. Whoa! Mind blown. That's amazing, right? Or I can grow a goatee and a mustache. Or I can make my hair go on fire. And then I started dancing. And so this was just something I animated in the timeline and recorded at, right. on, on the um, on the actual live event. I started singing "Old Town Road" by Lil Nas X and having Scott sing Classic. that. Classic. So that is the time where Scott Classic. jumps in and says, "Hey, Dave, like, what are you doing? This is terrible. Um, you know, get off the stage." And I say, "So that's a no on the Taylor Swift dance number." There you and go. he's like, "Yeah, that is." And so you can just keep adding anything you record in the timeline. You can I just package it. it together, keyframes, performance capture, and really bring these characters to life. Um, and and that's. That we see that the best characters out there have all these triggers, all this sort of stuff happening with them. So pretty That's cool. So great. Yeah. And the the just the feedback from the chat too. I mean, oh, this yeah. is so cool. This is so much fun. I'll make a I mean, short movie. Yeah. 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 We're glad you're enjoying There's it. There's Jamie. Yeah. Hi, Jamie. Jamie yeah. and I know each other. <laughs> she's my girlfriend. Hi, Jamie. Oh, Thanks for oh, tuning very in. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> First time she's ever chatted. Wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> Um, someone was asking, Julie's asking about the character, how the voice is tracking up. So when you're talking, the voice is still, you know, um, it's still picking up audio. And that's because the microphone is picking up just live audio. So whatever it hears, yeah. it's going to do. Um, but you do have a preference in here, character animator preferences, where uh, we've just added this in the latest. Thank you for the segue, by the way. This is this is perfect. The segues uh, that we've been having, these are, it's like you can't even plan You these. can't. You can't. You could try and you'll be fooling no, yourself. It's just it's, magically uh, all working it's, out. It's the so beauty good. of live. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So here in your preferences, we've added, what we found is people have asked, and I know preferences are really exciting stuff, but uh, I think this is because people have said, oh, my mouth maybe feels a little too chattery or um, a little too, I don't see as many mouth shapes. And so now you have control over how many or how few mouth shapes you're going to see over here. So if you want it to be a little more sensitive, you can turn that up, or if it's feeling too chattery, you can turn it down. But even better, to answer your question, Julie, you were talking about, is camera-based muting. So if I turn this all the way you know, up a little bit, I don't know how well this is gonna work in a live environment, let's see. Let's find out. So when I'm talking, this looks pretty good, but go ahead, Paco, you talk. Hey, what's going on? Scott Belsky here. I can no longer be talking. <laughs> wow, so what is happening oh, so It's only what, picking you up. Yeah, what magic is that? Well, uh, all that's happening- this be Sensei? Yeah, it, it is. is. It is Adobe sensei? sensei, for those of you playing the drinking game at home. So, um, <laughs> I've heard about this. Yes, yes, it's fun, it's dangerous. So, dangerous. Uh, so what's happening here, if I turn the camera-based muting up, all it means is it's not gonna move the mouth unless I'm moving my mouth. So what's oh, happening- so it's so, looking exactly, at your mouth. Okay, exactly. so that's why it's rejecting everything else. It yes. hasn't just grown to love your specific voice. Yes. But that, yeah, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's just a nice little feature, particularly yeah. when you're in a live environment like this, or a lot of people do live streaming on Twitch or Facebook yeah. or other stuff like that. Um, it works really well. So um, yeah, it's a great way, just a nice little trick. I'm just gonna keep his hair on fire. Um, there you go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you get the basic idea. So play around with these. You can also go back to old versions if you want or do a few other things, but a um, few options there. So that's a quick look at keyframes, but Paco, we've got so many features here. I mean, I- Let's I, dive into another one. Yeah, let's show another one. No so, shortage of content with Character um, Animator. Absolutely. So here I've got that a nice- That was a good segue, by the way. It, it, it's it great. is. great. This it transition is. game is I, on I tell point. You, I tell you, chat's <laughs> loving it, yeah. Um, so yeah, so you have a bunch of, uh, you know, here's a nice little cartoon that I did of this guy and and this robot playing guitar. And, uh, okay, guitar and totally keyboard. normal scene, yes. Totally normal scene. Yep. So play this back, I spent a long time recording it and I export it to Facebook or YouTube or whatever and uh, no one's watching it. Why would, because it's boring. It's just holding one shot. Uh, that's not how animation works. You have camera no, movements. You that's move not on, how right? video production or exactly. anything that works. You exactly. need different shots, you need variety. Absolutely. Now in the past, one of the nice things about Character Animator is it does dynamic link with Premiere Pro or After Effects. So Love you it. could just take your composition, bring it into After Effects or Premiere Pro, and then zoom in and zoom out and use all the tools that you know and love already. Right. But um, what we've done is hopefully save you a little bit of a trip in incorporating cameras in Character Animator. So if I wanted to add a camera to this scene, I could just go to Scene, New Scene Camera, and that's going to add a new camera here in my timeline and then I can uh, keyframe this and do whatever I want. So if I select my camera over here, on the right hand side, I see my camera transform properties. And then I can say, okay, you know what? I want to keyframe. Good thing we already learned about keyframes. Yep. I can keyframe zoom, position X, 
mm -hmm. of that stuff, and they're automatically gonna show up down here. Now for cameras, I'm probably gonna change these. I'm gonna select them and right click them and say toggle hold keyframe. So it's gonna hold the shot instead mm -hmm. of doing that gradual ease from one to the next. And then let's say, okay, at this point, I think I want to zoom in a little closer. So let's zoom in hey. here and we'll do position Y and X and all of that stuff to get it just right. And now if I played this back, I would see, okay, my characters start here, they're doing okay, but then when it reaches this new keyframe, it's gonna okay. move to that. That's awesome. And it's good to take note of, you're doing that with toggle hold keyframes. Because if you didn't yes. have that, then it's gonna gradually zoom in. Right. But if you set that keyframe, then it's just like a cut using the camera. Exactly, but yeah. the other method is totally fine too. Like that's how I would do like a zoom out. So if I feel yeah. like, wait, this is way too close, we're seeing too many details going on, what's going on here, mm -hmm. I can move and uh, I change these keyframes to ease. So you have just the same things you're familiar with if you've used other programs. In fact, if you really know what you're doing, uh, try clicking the little carrot here. You've got a full graph editor for every single Ooh, keyframe parameter. Editor. So if that's your thing, go nuts. Uh, you can have fun with that. Um, but for the purposes of right now, I'm just gonna do it pretty easy. So let's say I wanted to zoom out. So let's change this back to 100 and zero and zero. And now, because I didn't do toggle hold keyframes, instead I did ease, um, mm -hmm. this one right here, now it's gonna do a slow zoom out there from where it originally was. So you can do pans, zooms, you can rotate, get a Dutch angle for some reason if you wanted that. Um, but you have all these options here. So when you put this all together, you get a scene that looks a little more like this, where I've kind of added a bunch of keyframes, I've got the close-ups, nice. I got some pans, and it's just way more interesting. Basically, you want to always, you know, kind of serve things up, make it make it visually diverse. Um, here we got yep. a close-up on that character. It's going to it. pan in a second to the robot. So, yeah, super simple to do, and you don't have to go to After Effects and Premiere now to do this sort of thing. So, yeah. It's all in here. And I'm, Dave, I'm, of course, assuming that you made a song that goes along with this that's hiding somewhere. Yeah, you know, for this just... one, I think I was just saying one, two, three, one, two, three for ah, this particular yes. thing. But, yes, I'm actually working on... Uh, a uh, thing that I hope to get out by the end of the year that'll be a music video with um, at least the, ki the kid character and maybe the robot. Um, we'll see. I'm still working on it. Okay. Uh, I saw Billie Eilish yesterday at Max and just was inspired Inspiration. to do yes, more music. That, and so the I, music uh, video that I hadn't seen the music video before. Yeah, that was pretty awesome, right? It was pretty rad. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. good. So look out for Dave's video. Yes. He's, I'll be on the yeah. Max uh, uh, stage <laughs> next year, should next I say. Year. How, this is where it all started. This Taco is going to be dancing. Me. There yeah. we go. Right here um, on Adobe Live. Someone was asking a question, does the camera have focal length? No, at this point, it's a pretty bare bones basic camera. Um, so you don't have um, Z depth, for example. You don't have focal length. You don't have lenses or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But that is something. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, so please uh, tweet at me, at OK Samurai. We'll show stuff later. Um, and uh, Or just, you know, it's easy to find us online um, in the forums and that sort of stuff. So we would love to hear what you think. So if those are features you would really like, tell us about it and tell us how you would use it. And uh, again, like I was saying, 20 bucks per feature and we'll get it in <laughs> just we'll get fine. It in. Yeah. 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 Um, so we have another question that says, how is this different than After Effects? Yeah, great um, question. Yes, it's on screen right now. If you were to tune in, you could be like, this looks like After Effects. Right. But I mean, let's just give it the elevator pitch. Like, what's yeah. character animator and why is this not After Effects? Yeah, so, I mean, with keyframes now, you're like, uh, you're yeah, like it can it be a little, a little confusing, yeah, right? It looks but, like that. Um, what's happening is, is you know, After Effects, uh, you know, it, it is primarily keyframe-based animation. And while mm -hmm. we do have keyframes, the main bread and butter of character animator is performance capture. That's where it so, shines. Top right, what's yes. looking at Dave. Yes, so exactly. That's all real time. And you can't do that with right After here. Effects. You yes, can. That. you can. You can do face tracking, you can do some other stuff, but right. for example, let's take a case like this, this guy playing the guitar. Now, if I wanted to do this in After Effects, I could keyframe him, I could rig him up, I could move things around, but you know what? If I just press record and do this, that's way more natural and allows me to do these, you know, multiple things. I can even slide the hand of the guitar yes. if I want, do okay. some, I think he has some Shredding triggers for guitar. some different eye, you know, things and hand positions. So this is just, I'm performing, I'm acting. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's just a really natural and easy way to get into animation. And then if you want to bring this to After Effects later on, go for it, or Premiere Pro, go for it. You, you have that option. So it's basically, the way I see animation is, Animation is a toolbox. Sometimes you need a screwdriver, sometimes you need a hammer, and depending on what project you're doing, um, maybe it's character animator, maybe it's After Effects, maybe it's Animate, um, there's a lot of different tools out there for you, you to use. Um, for me, I, character animator makes animation more accessible. Character animation was always something that I was always kind of scared of. I felt like I couldn't do the lip sync, I couldn't do the head movements. And now with character animator, I feel like, yeah, I, I could make a cartoon, and I have made several cartoons and put them out there, which is uh, really fun to do. So. so actually, that is a great segue to something 
something else that okay. I want to bring up. Yeah. We've been having people ask where can they find you, where's your Behance page, where yeah. can people look at some of your work just for inspiration and to kind of get yeah. like a primer on character animator. What's the best Sure, one? sure. So the best place to go, um, so OK Samurai is my uh, handle and website. So OKSamurai.com, OK A-Y. S-A-M-U-R-A-I.com. Um, and uh, there it'll have links to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all that stuff. Um, and uh, also some links to more free puppets. So this, these characters, actually these characters are on the official Adobe site, but some other characters um, that I've created uh, show up there as well. So um, yeah, that's the best way, place to follow me. And what is really, that? Is it okay? Like, okay, A-Y-S-A-M-U-R-A-I. Yeah, so. Is it this the? Uh, yeah, that one's fine. That'll okay. take you to the puppets page. And that's a good oh. one to show because that's okay. that so kind of. So we switch to my screen, yes, there yeah. we go, so. So these are, this is a collection of all the puppets I've made. So we've got this monster at a campfire, uh, this little cartoon Narrator version. Narrator Dave. Um, that, that Lita one, she's got Lita. a hair system that has physics. Um, and so you can make the hair longer or kind of stringy or back and forth. We, as I said before, Super we have a whole rad. physics engine. Um, and you made all these, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So this, if you need to know anything about Character Animator, this is your chance. We're here with Dave for about 30 more minutes, 20 more minutes. Ask any questions you want because this is the guy to talk to. And as you can see, he's got a lot of social links. This is a good place to start. It's all under the OK Samurai handle, right? Yes, OK yeah. Samurai is what you're looking for. There's no other OK Samurais out there that I know of. So that's that's <laughs> that's uh, an original name. Yeah, it, it's, I don't it, I don't think I've heard it. That. Was, it was my band name in uh, high school and college. So I just had the domain name, and I was like, ah, I'm just oh, gonna keep just, it and go it. with it. So okay. yeah, great. Cool. Um, we can go back to Dave's screen. So yeah, uh, so let's see. Um, someone was saying. Uh, can I export my project to After Effects? Yeah, you can just drag this project into AE and it's going to show up in After Effects. Um, it's going to show up as footage and if you don't have a background, it'll show as a transparent layer. Um, but you can dynamic link with that and it, it uh, works really well. And that's a really common workflow. That's one that I've used several times. Um, the last one is uh, Audio triggers. Ah, I love um, this guy. So I don't know if we have uh, audio hooked up or not. It, uh, it, we can. It's, um, if not, do it's we, not You won't be able to hear. No, how, how can we do this? You won't be able to hear it. Oh, we can add a mic to it. Let's do that. Okay. okay so we'll have audio. We just have okay. to change some settings. So if yeah. you go to your system preferences. Let's do it. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Uh, and then let's go to sound. Yep. We'll go to output and make sure it's the, yeah, the internal speakers. Okay. So that should be okay, huh? That should be okay. And then we're just okay. going to have this mic set up right here. Okay. So not the best way to capture <laughs> audio, but it's a way to get it. Hey, so we both okay. get it. It's going to be worth it. Okay. okay. So let's see. Your volume's up. Uh, should be. Uh, yeah, I... It's so funny, I get to troubleshoot while I'm in about the house chair. Okay. Usually I just have to sneak in. So let's just try let's this. So it. I'm just going to do a quick uh, little snare hit. Let's see. Not sure if you can hear that or not. But is, it, is it up as loud as we can? It is here? not. Let me okay, turn that off. There you go. Okay, it's subtle. We can hear it. All Jacob, right. he gave me the <laughs> thumbs up. So it's okay. If he can hear it, you all can hear it. So basically what's happening, <coughs> excuse me here, is... Um, to a trigger. So there's things we've shown multiple times. When you press a button, something happens. Uh, now, you can also add audio to that character. So if I want to do a like a hi-hat here, I can click that. Triangle, cowbell, more cowbell. <laughs> crash. Uh, absolutely, you need more cowbell. And so this is great. If I have a drumming robot, I can you know start to do something like, you know, Give me a little drum so this is really that. funny. You're using the keys to play it. So yeah. let's go to the GoPro cam. I just want to show this real quick. <laughs> All right. Here, I'll move out of the way there like that. Jacob, let's switch to the, yeah, there we go. So he's essentially just playing music with his keyboard and it's all being translated on. This is so meta. It is. Super meta. He's playing music right now with a character animator. Keyboards, but it's drumming. And there's the big, uh, this is yeah. crazy. <laughs> There you go. So this just adds another live element. I mean, in cartoons, sound effects are a huge part of it, right? Like you, you know, go whoosh, or you know, you, you're a ruga when your eyes go. So Classic. there's a lot of different stuff like that. And so this is just gonna open up a number of really cool possibilities. And also be able to do it live. A lot of our live streamers are asking, you know, who are streaming on Twitch or other places, hey, I wanna be able to do, when a new subscriber subscribes to me on Twitch, I wanna be able to press a button, have my character's head explode and, you know, play yeah. a sound effect and, we have a head explode yeah, emoji. His head has been exploded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so he's got it. Thank you. Him, yes. 
Very cool. And someone said, yeah, cool. I have a fever. Fever from more cowbell. Oh, That's classic. right. There you go. Yeah, I don't think that'll ever die out. No, it won't. It it's won't. just one of those timeless classic memes. So. In, fa in fact, uh, we have an engineer on the team, um, Jim, who uh, hooked this up to his uh, MIDI drum set. You can hook up character animator triggers to Whoa. MIDI devices as well. And so he was playing the drums and he had this connected so the robot was playing along with him. So if you wanted to do a drum solo and then have the robot play what you're playing, hook up a MIDI set and it would be able to connect. So those of well. us who don't know what a MIDI set, what is that? Yeah, so MIDI is basically um, uh, uh, devices that you can use to have little dials or knobs okay. or things like that, or in this case a drum set, and that's an input that you can um, connect to things like character animator or other things in information that it can understand to trigger other things. So you may have, if you have a keyboard at home, like a piano keyboard, you may be able to uh, hook that up to character animator and when you press C major, you know, C or D or E, we'll translate it can to character do triggers. animator. And if you have those little dials and sliders as well um, on your keyboard, on a synthesizer or something like that, those can slide things. Um, and then there's specific things like palette gear. Um, actually, they just rebranded re to monogram, mm. uh, a creative console. You can use them and uh, these little dials and knobs. And it almost feels like you're playing a video game. You are puppeteering these characters yeah. and pressing little buttons and things. It's it's uh, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Ryan. Whoa, look at this. Speaking oh, of it's segments. Time. It's time. We have another one. So everybody, what the backgrounds behind us mean or the fireworks, it's this chat and win time. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the chat a question. I'm okay. totally taking Kathleen's way, she the way she does this. Okay. So we'll ask you a question. And then in the meantime, go ahead and answer the question, fill up that chat, because you can have a chance to win a 3-3, a CC three-month subscription. Whoa. You can use it to play with Character Animator. You can. Okay, We're so there. Dave, what should we ask them? Ooh, good question. So what, what, are, what, are the, what are the types of questions people normally Let's ask? Let's just, I'll give you an out. Why don't okay. we say this? Based on the stream, all the cool features that you've seen with Character Animator, what is the coolest feature you've seen with the stream, or just that character animator has, period. Yep. So we'll be right back. <laughs> I'll do it, yeah. Um, okay, so we're back. Uh, we're just going to wait a bit. We have about 45 seconds to a minute and a half until we find who our winner is. So let's wait and hang out. What do we got on the chat, Dave? What are the responses? Uh, lots of good ones. Keyframes, Ryan Griffin. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of Character Animator community users, so thank you everyone for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm seeing keyframes, um, cowbell. Uh, Cowbell, yes. yeah, I mean, that's a feature that you just can't go wrong with. Yeah. Face tracking, yes. I mean, that's, yep. I feel like, the bread and butter yeah. of yeah. Character Animator. Yeah. We have a name. Oh, Pamela. Pamela. Congratulations. Congrats, Pamela. Good you job. You have won three months, three months of CC, Creative Cloud. So use that to play with Character Animator. Use it to fill yeah. your heart's desire with all the creative freedom you can do with the apps. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for playing. Thank you. Chad win. Let's go back to Dave's screen like yeah. nothing ever happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ryan was saying all the sticker, uh, Ryan in the chat was saying how many stickers I have. Yeah, we were uh, passing oh, these let, out. Yeah, let's go back to the we full have shot. Oh, sure. Uh, let's go back to the main GH5 cam. I want to see Dave's stickers because you actually do have a lot. I didn't even see that. We do have a lot, it's yeah. It's kind of funny with, with Adobe Live, I feel like there's two sides or just with laptops. Yeah, see, so here we have the two sides of laptops, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right. people that just do nothing, which is me, <laughs> and then we have just take over everything. And I see a lot of cool, it seems like, character animator stickers. Yeah, I yeah. I recognize her. Yes, right now, yeah, so you've seen some of these there characters. There we go, it yeah. seems like they were some of the starter characters. Yeah, animators. so we made some of these characters, uh, some of these stickers for Max. We've been handing them out at uh, the different labs and sessions. So they actually had me teaching seven different classes here at Busy Max. Man. Um, so Busy I was man, actually, Max. I had one half an hour before Adobe Live, yes. so I ran, I had, went to the bathroom, got a <laughs> drink of water, ran over here. Paco was like, where's Dave? Oh no, we're gonna we're go live and like, out. yeah. How am I do and I like, know character animator? Yeah, How am I gonna, <laughs> yeah, you're do gonna have this? to do this all by yourself. <laughs> Luckily, it worked out, and uh, we got here. But yeah, That's so awesome. these are um, stickers. So if you ever see us in any event, we go to a lot of animation events or NAB, IBC, uh, internationally in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Come find us, and you will get free unicorn stickers or any of these Likewise things. Likewise with Adobe Live. We yep. have so many stickers. <laughs> yeah. I think our team packed close to 4,000 stickers. They're sticker packs. 
So it's yeah. awesome swag that you can get at these conferences. So there you, you go. can recognize this face, that face. If you see us, we'll have some <laughs> sticker swag. So we do stickers again next Exactly, time. We'll exactly. Right. So there you go. All right, what else we got? Uh, yeah, so those are the three main features that are here in, um, in the latest uh, release. But um, yeah, you've, you've uh, you know, there's, there's tons of other things you can do. I think one of the things people ask, and I, I think I saw someone ask in the chat was, well, does this only have to be 2D characters? I've shown a lot of like flat Whoa. style characters, but check There's out what's happening answer. here. There's no, I've got a, like a cool 3D-ish fox here. So this is made by our friend Emily Watts, um, and uh, this is another free example puppet called Foxy. So Foxy was actually made in a uh, 3D modeling program, I believe it was Blender, and she uh, exported it and, and rendered out individual parts of it and brought it into a Photoshop file. So she named things like, you know, head, eyebrow, right pupil, all of that stuff, and then translated it into an animated character. Now, the nice thing about this one is it also has the automatic head turns. Yeah. So in Character Animator, you can say, this is my front view, this is my quarter view, and this is my profile view, and it will track your head as you move around like that. I can also look up and down and a few other things if you want to add that. Um, so it's pretty cool, you know, so you can really add whatever type of character you want. Uh, people, we've seen people use Lego minifigures, action figures, clay sculpted characters, um, hand-drawn scribbles and sketches. It really doesn't matter what style, you can make whatever, if, it can, if you can put it in Photoshop or Illustrator, you can animate it in character. So animator. with the Lego figurines, are people taking a photo of the Lego person, bringing it to Photoshop? masking it out and yeah. then you can animate it just like this? Yeah, so what they'll do is a lot of times um, um, there's this one channel, Grounds of Freedom, I believe is the name of it, that has taken, uses Character Animator and they took photos of the Lego P Lego characters, they probably wow. put them on front of a green screen or right. some solid background easy so they're easy out. to take them out. Yeah. And uh, then they might like do a few moves. So they might say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, take a shot here and here and here and that's how you would get a head turn if you wanted to do it, um, something like that. And then you Amazing. could also, um, animate the face over top of that. So they might just you know, mask out the face and then here's my eyes, here's my mouth, put it over top of the character, do a few arm movements you know, that give it that stop motion style look and uh, it works really well, so yeah. You can bring anything into it. Anything. That's great. Now even cooler, if I press the left or right arrow keys, this character walks. Whoa. So we do have the walk behavior as well. You didn't see that one coming, huh? Yeah. Wow, that so, is a surprise. So yeah, basically um, you can rig your character for walking and have them walk around an environment as well. Um, and so it's not just a talking head static on the screen. And you know, you might say, okay, great, but that probably took you, you know, 20 hours to do to set up a walking rig. No, I'm gonna do it in two minutes right here. Let's see it. Let's so I've go. got a robot character here, I'm ready to go. I wanna make it it's just kind of flapping and moving around. Let's rig it. So I'm gonna go here to rig mode. This is kind of an x-ray right view mode. of my character. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add the walk behavior to it. This is gonna give it the superpower to walk. You see, I have all my behaviors over here on the right-hand side for physics, face, eye gaze, all the basic behaviors that I wanna have my character doing. And then I can keep adding tags. See, when I select something like the head, I can say, okay, I also wanna tag this as a neck. So the head's gonna kind of bounce up and down. And then maybe I say, I'm gonna start tagging where the, uh, the shoulders are or something like that. So let's tag the left shoulder and the right shoulder and it's super easy to do because I have this little graphic over here that teaches me, okay, now I'm gonna do the waist and the, uh, the hips, um, so I know all the different elements that I need to do. Now this original artwork, this is just, uh, this isn't broken, it's broken up into a few parts, but I don't have to say like, you know, this is the bicep or this right. is, uh, you just have to say this is the leg, this is the arm, and then you can just tag them uh, the correct way. So now I'm on Too the right easy. leg, I'm gonna do this, and I'm just gonna do a few more tags and then we're gonna go check out in record mode and see how our progress is looking. So let's do that. And finally, a little uh, toe right here. And now let's go to record mode and see what's happening. Okay. okay. Well, we're getting somewhere, right? He's bouncing That's up and down. Movement, I'd say. If yeah. you want a skateboard and robot, uh, this, is, uh, this is looking good. This is the way to do it. But let's just finish it up and just show um, how you would go through this whole process. So, I mean, it's, you know, if you've ever tried to set up a walk rig animation, it can be really time consuming and difficult, particularly going from something like this that has, you know, zero rigging basically. It's just a, basically a Photoshop layer file. Um, but and you, you added, could, what, half a dozen pins to it and we're getting halfway there yeah, to a walking animation? that's all I'm doing. I'm just gonna finish that's up with nice. the arms here. That's the last, last part, so let's do something like this. Left elbow and... Yeah, Steve is saying, so pins like puppet warp. And essentially, I mean, it kind, kind of, of is, yeah. It's kind of, 
it's kind of using the same technology, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So um, that looks good. I've just added all the pins, and I don't know if anyone's timing, but uh, two minutes, three minutes, something like I that. I think it's one fifty-eight. Okay, so okay. I was right on I the just, money. Phew, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna make it. But. Yeah, it was a close one. We were lucky. So yeah, just like that, I That's now it. have a walking character. Um, so yeah, it, it's that easy to set this up. So you were talking about the puppet warp. What you can do is mm -hmm. click at any time this little mesh and Whoa, it shows you we have a wireframe mesh of all the triangles and where those are being added to the character. Uh, so those are the points where it's more concentrated. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like that, but, but again, we're more performance-based capture. So okay. instead of puppet warping, you're using the mouse to drag in real time and set these different poses and, and that sort of stuff. Um, and, it, and it works really well. It really makes it, you have to think of it less of fiddling around with keyframes, although we can do that now too, and more like, you're just acting and talking. So a performance is more about um, you, you know, giving your best performance and head movements and eye yeah. movements and that sort of stuff. So, Getting it all yeah. captured in character animator. Yeah, yeah. Great, so. all right, Dave, so a little time check. We have about maybe 15 minutes left. Okay, okay. Um, what else can we fill with that? Plenty Great of features. stuff. Yes. So let's go over some character animator basics. So you're opening up the app and you're like, you know what, I wanna start I'm going to start rigging my characters. So this character is is fine, but he doesn't have a lot of rigging to him, right? So mm -hmm. um, his hair is not flopping around. Um, he His body is just moving and looking really weird and flopping. That doesn't look good. And there's a few other things that I could do to him. So let's go into rig mode and see if these are just some beginner tips to uh, get a character rigging starting. So I'm going to go here into rig mode. And hopefully so just, just to be clear, that yeah. character you just pulled up, that was just taking in a character with nothing else done to it. Exactly. Right? So what exactly. we're going to start doing with it is just start giving it life, rigging it different things. So and you this could is a clean slate. Yeah, but you could see already it was talking, it was moving yeah. the eyes and stuff, and that's because I named the layers and groups a certain way. Got it. Um, but now I can start adding some more stuff. So let's take the body, for example. So here's my body group. I'm just going to take uh, what we call a uh, fixed pin, a pin tool down here, and I'm just going to add several fixed pins, and that's going to keep the body pinned to the ground. So now if I go back to record mode now, and I move my head around, now that body go. is pinned to the ground. Okay, so, so now it's no longer waving. Exactly. So, really so I might want to scale my put. character up a little bit, maybe move him down. I'm just using the transform behavior over here to get him so it looks a little bit better. So this is what I would want. If I was doing a narration of a, um, you know, an explainer video or some sort of story I'm telling, this is probably the format I would take. He's kind of in the corner of the screen talking about something. Okay, but now I also want to be able to drag the arms around, and I can't do that right now. If I click and drag, nothing's happening. Luckily, that's really easy to do as well. Let's see, let's see so let's fix. go back in here. I'm going to go to the body. Let's find one of my arms. Uh, the right arm here looks like a good place to start. And by default, the first thing I want to do is move the origin handle to um, where the arm should rotate from. So in this case, I want the arm to move from the shoulder, so I'm going to move it up there. And you'll notice when it finds a piece of artwork to connect to, it turns green. So that's a really easy way to tell, oh, okay. oh yeah, this is something I want to connect to and make kind of a fully rigged puppet. Do all the body parts have these origin handles? Yes, they okay. do. Yes, they so do. So that's kind of, would you say, the anchor point, more or less? Exactly, yes, oh, exactly. Okay. Very similar to that, right. right. And then to be able to drag it, all I have to do is use this little dragger tool. It looks like a little compass directional tool down here and add a dragger handle right there. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now I go back to record mode. And when I start clicking and dragging, now there I have a hand that moves around. But it's looking a little weird and spaghetti-ish, right? Like that is... Uh, His arm's that's, tapering away. That's not good. Is that Something. A brush? Yeah, yeah. It looks like it. It looks like it. So how can we fix this? Well, we can add some arm uh, structure to it. So let's go back to rig mode. And let's go ahead and use this thing called the stick tool. And all I have to do is just click and drag, and I've got a little uh, forearm there. I'm gonna leave some room from the elbow and click and drag okay. right there to make the bicep. And now when I go back, let's try to click and drag the arm again. And now I've got a lot Where's more structure to the arm. So he it's that has muscle e mass now. Yeah, he yeah, does, he does. Going away. So it's that easy to set up something like this. I'm um, very simple to set up a, a system. Now I still do have the uh, super dragging, the stretchiness that's happening, and, and, and I can get in some weird positions where my elbow might be bending in weird ways that I don't want it to. Yeah, as, as Tim said, looks totally natural. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yes. That's, that's what we're going for. Yeah. So the way that I would um, want to do this now would be, you have the addition, like I said, um, to add extra behaviors to your character. So let's go back here to my character, 
and I'm going to add uh, what we call the arm IK behavior. IK stands for inverse kinematics. If you've used this before, um, so you, the arm IK behavior. Arm IK. So I'm going to go That's ahead and term. add that to the character. And now I just have to give Character Animator a little more information about my arm. It just needs to know where the wrist and the elbow and the uh, the shoulder are. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like I was doing with the walk animation, yeah. I'm going to do one there for so. the shoulder, one here for the wrist, and then let's do one more for the elbow and see how that turns out. And hopefully, when I go back here now to record mode, now when I click and stretch, oh, now so this is looking weird, right? It is bending, but it's bending in the wrong way. Yeah, Something weird is happening. Down. Yeah, I don't want to do that. So I have full control over here in my arm IK behavior where I can say, you know what? I want to change the, thresh, uh, the elbow bend threshold. And I think if I change this in some, actually, let's reset it and see if this works. Something must have been uh, going off a little bit there. In the and meantime, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this question. I think, yeah, I think I can please, take go this for it. Dave. Go for it. So Arturo is asking, are the eyes moving random or how? They're actually being tracked in real time to Dave. So you can yes. see Dave is looking up, he's looking down, but it's all real time. You don't have to keyframe that or anything. It's all being Exactly, tracked. exactly. Yes, you do have that as an option. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's going on with my arms here. Something is weird with it, so I'd have to troubleshoot. I think I, I think um, I would have to do a little more in-depth playing around with the elbows and get it right. But basically, once you get this set up, then you don't have to worry about it again. Your elbows right. move the right way. You're never going to get these weird, awkward positions, um, and it's going to work work really well. I think we just shattered his elbow. Yeah, we I think all this moving around, it's just, just yeah, like, something I'm something was wrong with that. So <laughs> I don't know. It was probably <laughs> me mistagging something over here is my best guess. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll look into it. I'll get yeah. there's there's an engineer looking at it right now. I'm sure. So yeah. You got a fan here, right? People are I yelling. Do, yeah, someone just yelling at you. Hey, yeah, just yeah. of fans out here, <laughs> all looking at your stream. All yeah. the character animating. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, um, so that's just some basic basic ways to, to add that sort of stuff um, to a it. character. Um, for recording, a lot of people, here's a new character, Chloe. Um, she's actually an updated Chloe. version of a puppet we had before uh, built into the app. Um, but now she's back and she's a little bit more of a modern look and then she also has a lot of triggers. So here I've got uh, like a wave. Let's flip the camera to the other one so we can see the triggers. We can see all this. Oh yeah, matter. sorry. There we go. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. So these are all my triggers that I've set up for her. And so these are all her arm positions. Um, so a nice little wave and back on the hips and like this. So you just have a lot of, a lot of options there. And then I can also make her eyes wide open or she's a little more sad and unsure little of things. Um, and different hand triggers if I wanted to point or do other things like that as well. So if I were to record with Character Animator, a lot of people are, when they think of performance capture, they're like, all right, I gotta get everything right the first time. I'm gonna go through my performance and get it all right. No, actually, uh, you can take it one step at a time. It's more like doing music, right? It's more like uh, recording a band. You can record a band live, just press the record button. So I can do that, like let's press record here. Just do it live. Right, and all right, hey everybody. My name is uh, Chloe here, and I'm very happy to be here. And uh, whoa, what's going on? There's a lot of people in this chat. I'm a little scared. It's okay, right? I guess we'll be all right. Okay, so that award-winning performance there, I pressed record and all, all of this stuff is showing up down here in the timeline. And that wow. includes every mouth shape that I just said. So let me disarm her so I'm only seeing timeline data down here. And then every mouth shape that was said that it picked up is showing up down here. So if I say, you know what that S shape, I want that to instead be an uh instead. I just awesome. right click it and change it. Or I want to move these around. It. Every little everything you can yes, fine tune. Everything right there. All these flips, That's all great. the different triggers I was pressing. So if I want this flip, you know, to hand flip to happen later or earlier, or add another one, I can again right click this and change it to something else, a point. I can do that. So yeah, you can press record, get everything, you know, try your best, and then you can tweak things, add add uh, you know, edit things, add keyframes, do whatever you want to it, or even better is you can do it one step at a time. So let's say I didn't like that and I want to kind of slowly build up a performance. The way I would do that is, let's say I got a friend to send me a voiceover track. Yeah. So I just take that. So here's, uh, my wife actually recorded this, sent it to me, 30 seconds of a character talking because um, my female voice is not very, uh, not very convincing. And so then all I have to do is go to timeline, compute lip sync take from scene audio. That is going to analyze that audio track, no matter who it is, no matter whose voice, it could be a celebrity, it could be a politician, it doesn't matter, and it is going to automatically add all of those mouth shapes so your lip sync That's is there exactly working, which That's is awesome. a huge time saver. If you ever tried to do manual lip yeah. sync, 
Uh, this is uh, this is pretty good. So real quick over to the chat, um, we have a couple questions. One from Brandy. It says, sure. Can you make animals walk since their joints move differently? And I think that was kind of answered in the chat by Ryan. Yeah, yeah. So Ryan actually has one of the best examples of this. So Ryan Griffin in the chat, you should check his uh, site out. And his he does Twitch streams as well. So go follow him. Um, really great. He live streams his character animator creations. Um, and uh, I popped Love in it. on him a few times and said uh, said hi. Um, but yeah, it's um, so yeah. It, the walk behavior right now is primarily meant for uh, bipedal, you know, two foot uh, human characters. But that's us. there's yeah, exactly. That's that's you can do it. But you can hack it in interesting ways. Where let's say you had a second walk behavior for the back legs, then suddenly you've got a system where maybe you know you can have two walk behaviors happening simultaneously. That's so awesome. there's some weird things like that with anything in Character Meter. There's probably a way to do it. It might just take a little hacking and putting together to make it uh, work exactly right. Um, then we have one more with Julie. So when we were recording, Chloe? Was it Chloe? Yes. Yeah, she asked if it's recording audio, and yes, it is. So it was yep. taking everything that Dave was saying and translating it in real time to what the characters are saying. So as you can see, it's actually translating what I'm saying. Yeah. Hello, I'm yeah. Chloe. <laughs> now, someone I also saw in the chat was saying we need a Beetlejuice puppet. We need a Jason Levine puppet. And I, I think. Think we might have? You know, the, the, no, I, no, if, I, if, I, you, if you don't have one, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I, it needs to be done. It needs yeah. to be done. But what I want to say, we're still working on getting the hair physics just right for yes, Jason. It's, right, uh, it's right. impossible. <laughs> but what you can do, actually, where we're getting there, um, so you notice when I move Chloe, her hair is kind of dangling oh, okay. and moving around a little bit. So that's, we do have a physics uh, engine inside Character Emitter. And if I go into my physics behavior over here and change the stiffness and bring it down, Whoa, now I've got really. Now it's Jason hair. Now that's Jason level yeah, hair. So, it's, it's um, yeah. That's so, so cool. that's the nice thing is you can fine tune all of these different parameters to say like you know the face for example. If I didn't want my head to tilt this much when I tilt my head side to side, I can just bring the head tilt strength down to zero. And now when I move my head, it's still going to move left to right, but it's not going to tilt. Much. There's no rotation. Now if I change this all the way up to like 500 percent, now it's going to do that. <laughs> And uh, oh, that's and she's broken. That's just she's that's not good. Yeah, wow. but you do have fine-tuned control. Like you know, move eyebrows together. That's the default. But if I want to only move one eyebrow at a time, if I have really good control over my eyebrows, like I do, uh, you can do. Can you do that where you do one eyebrow raised? Uh, and I think so. I don't, looks, looks, that looks pretty good. I, I, yeah, yeah, you'd yeah, be okay. you're you're you'd be a great animator. I'm telling one you. That's eyebrow, uh, yeah. yeah. There you go. So you have options like that. You can just tweak all these different values um, and get your character looking exactly right. You can tweak it all. Exactly. All right. Exactly. One last time check. Dave, we yep. have about three more minutes. Left. All right. What can we squeeze in this three minutes? Do we want to dive deeper with Chloe or do you have something else that we can show? You know, I would say, you know, I, all I wanted to say here is just say, you know, you can um, select your character and I, it, all these things with the red dots means they're ready to record. So I could disarm them and then Those say. These are all the body parts? Or uh, these are all the behaviors. behaviors. These are all kind Got of the it. rules of the character. Yeah. So then I could say, you know what, I'm just going to arm the face. Press record on the face, uh, record the face. Okay, now I'm just gonna do the eyes and record them. And then you can bl build up a character performance step by step. You can even blend performances together. So if you got everything wrong in one part, you just do a second performance, blend it in. It looks like you got everything right the first time when in fact it might be 20 different performances right, right. that you've patched together. So um, I would just say to those of you who have not checked out Character Mater, you know, it's part of Creative Cloud. Download it, give it a shot. And this, this starting panel, this is the best place to go. That's this is go. where your video tutorials, if you click this robot, puppets here, if you need more, click see more. And, and a uh, genie, soccer ball, yeah. space fish. Anime it's, girl, it's that's all, all you need. And, and yeah. I can tell you, just looking at the chat, people are just loving it. I mean, we have a chat, it's like, can't wait to do this. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So it's, this is a great app. I mean, I, it's been awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate yes. it. And uh, again, Please reach out at OK Samurai for any requests. Yes. OK Samurai. Anything like that. OK Samurai. It's his handle and everything. Check him yep. out. Dave's got all the bells and whistles with character animator. He knows all the things. Um, if they were, to, if anybody were to reach out, do you, what would you say? Uh, I would just say, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I would say, uh, what's up? Uh, if you, you know, if you say Paco. Actually, in your tweet or your message to me, that just gives you bonus points, and I will answer you put your, yeah. your request or your question in the queue, higher in the queue. Yeah, yeah. so that's all you have awesome. to do. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for sticking around. <laughs> this has been an amazing stream. Dave, Dave thanks for coming hey, out. Hey, thanks for having me. We've learned so much with Character Animator. It's just an app that you can get in and just start away based on that starter, starter panel. Lots of stuff to do. All right, everybody. We have two, three more shows coming up. Um, so stick around. We still have, yeah, three more shows going on.
weird outro, sorry. <laughs> First time doing this, don't shoot me. Hey, you did a great job. <laughs> hey, let's hear it, chat. Let's hear it. I mean, uh, thanks, Taco, And thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, I love this community. I love everything that's going on with Adobe Live. So thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you more today. See ya. Right, everybody, thanks a lot. Thank you.